everybody, welcome back. This is Yusaki Hulu here in Tokyo, and uh, today it's another update of the RZ Blue Trigger. Um, they're done. They're done pretty much. They're all the way uh, to the. I, I dropped them off, and they're going to whatever their destinations are. I feel kind of a little bit of sadness because they're not here. You know, I used to like see them pretty much every day. You know, piece by piece, getting together. But you know, I'm really happy that they're on their way to. You know be played with with a lot of photographers around the world like I was surprised how many countries I had to ship to but uh, yeah they're they're pretty much done I had to do I was looking for boxes on Amazon and I couldn't find them and then I saw all the Amazon boxes that I had here of things that I order or whatever <laughs> I was like that's the answer <laughs> so I started to cut boxes and try to make something um, it's not like super professional as, as you may know I'm just just a guy doing it out of here but um i did my best to like pack them in a way that they're not gonna be able uh, you know they're not gonna be broke down anyways uh, i wanted to talk to you uh, not just for that but a little bit of my experience shooting with the trigger because um i'm the one who made it and i'm the one who's been using it so i know all the all the pros and cons of it i think um, maybe not because I don't do every single use scenario, but um, I tried uh, a photo shoot, which I don't really do shoot landscapes. So I just grabbed the camera and grabbed the trigger and just walked down here and went to take a picture. You probably guys have already seen it. If not, I'm just going to put it right now here. Boom. And as you can see, this is a night picture and uh, I did uh, several long exposures to achieve this photo and obviously tripod and uh, these, these long exposures were like 80, 18 seconds and then another for 24 seconds and another 45 seconds just to be able to get more of the range of light and shadows that I was to be able to, to get with just one photo even though I'm shooting with RAW and medium format and whatever but anyways so um, I wanted to talk to you guys about what it is uh, like to shoot with this guy uh, before you know for the people who gets it um, so here it is the little guy right now how it is this is mine this is the one that has the white light and everyone else has a, a blue light so for starters um, what I, I shipped with a little bit of um, what is called this it's called magic tape here in Japan uh, velcro so it's a little bit of velcro. I put it on the side of the camera. I'll show you guys in, in another video. And um, one thing to take into account is that I, I made it, uh, you know, there are two pieces over here that you open like this. And they're just like press fit like that. So you just like put them together and like squeeze it in. But as you can see, it doesn't have any clips or anything. It's just like a smooth surface. It's kind of long. So that's what it keeps it together just because it's long. So if you put it on the camera and you just like pull it from the outside, just grab it here and then pull it out. This bottom part um, depends on, you know, the angle that you're pulling it, it may separate from the back. It doesn't really affect anything. Like nothing is gonna like fall out or anything. Uh, it's just, you know, got, gonna give you that little trouble of, oh my God, now I have to take out that thing and close this thing again. But you know, it's no big deal, just, just, if you want to grab it, I'll, I'll just grab it like from the edge, so it it pull out pulls out with the velcro because sometimes the velcro is like very stiff. Um, you guys can polish it if you want, uh, or you know, opt for to use the velcro, not use the velcro, whatever you guys want. Um, they're plastic, they're PLA plastic, 3D printed. I printed uh, two millimeters um, of you know. Uh, of the walls so they're pretty stiff they're not gonna break anytime soon the infill is actually I think 60% because if I make it 100% it's gonna be more brittle because you know when you tap it everything's gonna vibrate so it doesn't have anything to cushion the, 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 the vibrations so I made it 60% so it's like more or less like hard and as you can see it's it's, it's really hard I can I couldn't break it with my hands if I want to so it is hard. This part over here, uh, if you guys are wondering how I achieve that transparency, is hot glue. So <laughs> I don't have any like uh, skills with uh, what you might call it. Like, uh, what could you do is here like resin and whatever. Um, I've been wanting to do it like a silicone molding and all that good stuff, but I have no experience. And if I was gonna learn from it to do it right now. It will probably take me, you know, another month or two to actually get some nice thing that I could call a product. 
So I just hot glue it in there. Uh, on mine, I did a couple of tests and it doesn't look that bad. So I think it's fine. And when you turn it on and you, you see a light in there, uh, well, mine is like this, right? As you can see, there is a, the light in there. And it glows pretty nice uh, on the camera. But when you see it in real life, it's actually, you can see a little bit of a uh, marveling. <laughs> I want to say a fancy word, but it's it's not like perfectly smooth. But yeah, you will see some kind of like texture under the the illumination here, especially in your guys' blue one. This is a white one, so it's kind of a little bit more bright. Um, uh, one thing to, to remember definitely is like for real, turn it off. Like you don't want to be switching batteries on this thing because um, uh, you will have to, right, eventually. But you don't want to be switching batteries, like wasting batteries so much on them. Because uh, if you leave it on, it's going to last for eight hours on and then it's going to be like, bye, I don't know. <laughs> so I leave it on and when you have to change the batteries, uh, like I said on the previous video, the top battery just lights out just like this, you know, there you go. And the bottom, ba the bottom battery, you have to like pinch this little uh, black hole there over here and then slide the, the top battery, which is not so... Um, easy but uh, at least if it's inside the box it's actually uh, more easy to handle because when I, I was doing the first test and everything uh, I was doing it without the box and the, without the box is <laughs> I was hurting my fingers and stuff like that just because the corners were too too edgy or you know it was hard to maneuver but with this thing it's easier I, I managed to switch batteries on these many times already so um, yeah it shouldn't be that hard for you guys to do uh, over there this part over here which has the cables, uh, you don't need to touch it. <laughs> uh, the switch over here, it's not uh, screwed or hot glued or anything. If you want, you can put some hot glue in there, it doesn't matter. But um, but yeah, if you push it out, if you like pull it out, it will come out. Uh, they're press fit in there, but they're not like, like super squished in there. So. Um, uh, if you want to try to force it out, it will come out. If you want to try to push it in, it will go um, in, maybe. No, I don't think it will really go in because I changed the position of this, the trigger uh, hole over here, the, the cable hole. And it's really on the way. So uh, some of you guys will have it a little bit popping out and you cannot push it back in. That's pretty much how it's going to be. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it's just so it doesn't jump in all the way inside mine is probably gonna go in <laughs> someday I don't know but uh, you know as long as you don't squish it in too hard or whatever um, the switch on position it's up like if you see it, the RC right here will be up off is, is down so when you see it down it's off turn it up is on and uh, you gotta remember to turn it off because uh, sometimes you may be able to for may maybe forgetting to turn it off um, I would take a shoot, like, uh, at least with a digital back, you know, uh, a digital back, the way that it works for the people that doesn't have it. Um, when you take a shoot, it will do an exposure, especially uh, phase, phase one. It does an exposure, let's say I ask for four seconds, it counts four, three, two, one, doing the exposure, then it closes the exposure, the aperture, and then the digital back by itself starts counting again those four seconds in a black just so it can get a reference of what is black because even that it's no light coming in um, there is still energy passing through the sensor and the energy obviously because of the moving and the temperature and this and that it will get a little bit of a noise so what it's doing is trying to calculate the noise that exists in four seconds and it will subtract that from the final image and um, so it will give you a little bit of more clear image. I don't know, just logic sticks of how digital box works. But anyway, um, when I did like a 45 second exposure, I would, you know, you just do your exposure, you finish the exposure, and then I have to wait for 45 seconds. Um, and then sometimes I would be like, oh yeah, that thing is on. It's been on for, you know, for double the time that I needed it. So really just turn it on when you will need it to shoot. Don't, don't turn it on and leave it on there for like the whole photo shoot and it's just connected and it's on because if you turn it on, it's not gonna affect your shoot. You can still press the button and take your pictures. Um, but just, you know, try to turn it off as, as, as much as you can. <laughs> 
and to know if it's on or it's off obviously you will be able to see it on your device so right here and there's a battery that's all gray out so if I if I turn it on it will come out and you will be able to see the the battery coming over here well you guys have it already right you have seen the the battery and um and you will see that the the, the battery is there and it's on so like say i'm talking and whatever uh, or i'm chatting or whatever just eventually try to switch on the app just to see if the battery is showing something there because if it's showing it means it's connected or is connecting and you gotta switch it off and make sure that the battery turns off right there uh, so yeah, try to keep it off. One other thing that I had an issue with uh, while doing this photo shoot, and um, this is something I still don't know exactly how to deal with it, um, but it will be something that I need to to be careful of. Is something I was freaking out. Um, is that uh, when I was doing the photo shoot, right? Uh, I needed to change it for uh, you know from 24 seconds to 18 seconds. I'm really not used to shoot outside. I get a little bit stressed out or nervous if it was raining and stuff like that. So I I was just wiggling like, oh my God, I need to take another shoot and whatever and set up. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to waste time. Like I freak out a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's bad, but I do. Um, and uh, by pushing the, I, I wanted to change. It was like around here for 45 seconds, right? And I wanted to put it over here to, to, um, to 18 seconds. But as soon as I, I move it like this, my my fat finger went off and as you can see it's counting down right now because i went ahead and did uh, an exposure right so um yeah there we go so yeah so before i there we go <laughs> sorry so I got it 42 seconds. So I, I, I was holding an umbrella with one hand, the other, the other hand was on the phone and I tried to move it over here to 18 seconds. And what I end up doing is starting a photo shoot, uh, a, a picture, right? An exposure. So I had to stop it. But meantime, this thing was already on. I was taking a picture and I just wanted to, to change the, the, the seconds over here, I had to go it out here. So, uh, Try to do it not in the middle because this is actually a square. This the circle in the middle. This is a square. So if you press on the corners, it may take. As you can see, that's a square. It may take the picture. It's is really. Uh, is, it has a little bit of a border outside here. Um, so maybe you can do tests before trying it out on the actual camera with film <laughs> before changing this thing. Um, because uh, I freak out. The reason why I freak out, I'm talking so much. The reason why I talk, I uh, freak out, is because I, I know you guys. Some of you guys don't 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 want it to shoot it on 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 digital backs, or you still don't have it, or don't want one, and you shouldn't film. So that mistake will mean one picture less, and uh, like a whole uh, an exposure down that you maybe didn't want it to. I just wanted to change some seconds, and I threw an exposure out because the trigger was so close to the to the knob. So that will be something to consider. Um, it's not fun to lose uh, frames like that. I've lost a lot in my, you know, in my life and experience. Uh, Polaroids and stuff like that, uh, just because of mistakes that I do, and it feels bad. I don't know. I, I freak out because I, I thought, you know, I'm giving you something that is gonna give you more troubles. Uh, so for now, I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now, right now, and. Um, uh, later on, I may do an update or something where I do an arm kind of button so you can like arm it and then be able to trigger this thing, like deactivate it over here, the, the actual trigger button. And then you can activate it and, and use it or deactivate it and, 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 and you know, so it will not be usable un until you're ready. And when you arm it, you trigger the shoot and then it will like disarm it and you will not be able to trigger the other shoot until you arm it again or something like that. But I don't know if that will be too much trouble or that if that sounds like a good idea for you guys. I would really like to see your comments and your experiences once you get them. They're going to be there really fast. But yeah, that was one of the things that I really wanted to, to, to point out. Um, the cable, it's uh, it's going to be, when you receive it, maybe you're going to freak out because it's it's it looks like it's bended. <laughs> because I couldn't fit it on the box. The box was like this, so I had to put it like this, and it's just like it, it 
terms like from here like it's right in the corner um it's just one band and it's not strong enough to like break cables and the wire that i'm using it's it's called a flexible uh flexible cable right the flexible wire whatever um it's there it says right in there and it's it's like one of these things so um you know if, even if you go all the way here it's it's still like very very uh it's, it's not gonna break just by doing it one time if you keep doing it like over here if you keep doing these and these and these and these, and these eventually it will break but um uh, I seen the cables from inside and they're like they're like very flexible little little wires right and they're like many so it's not like it's one thing that it's just it's just like one that it's it's gonna break eventually if you move it too much so um don't freak out so much for that just you know take it out and and don't try not to bend in some legs like that um anyway they're meant to be bended they're meant to like like twist because they're gonna be from the front of the camera to the side so uh <laughs> yeah Another thing is um, try not to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what should I say or not. But uh, I know it's your device and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, just uh, try not to abuse it because I don't have an extra one here to send to somebody that says, you know, oh my god, I broke it or you know, I, I, I it, it, something happened or you know, oh, I didn't do nothing. I just broke or whatever. Um, even that I wanted to replace it, it's gonna take months for me to make another one and to actually replace it there's a couple of orders that just came in and i order them on friday or uh, yeah i ordered them a couple of days ago and i just received an email that i'm gonna get the parts to start making them uh probably on august like ends of july or or august so right now we're uh, you know 15 of july so it's gonna take two three weeks just to get the parts and this is just one part the other one I still don't even have an email that when I'm gonna be getting them uh, they are very they already be sent to the manufacturer and whatever but they're gonna take a little while so that's that and uh, yeah so um, they are only 12 of these units in the world and you know whoever ordered one you have one of this and that's it that's there no more unless i make some more and to make one it takes uh you know how much it takes and how long it takes so um take care of it <laughs> and and yeah i put a lot of love into designing them and and and, and leaving the parts that uh that uh you know that are like uh it, it it's not a perfect thing you know it, it's not even a perfect fit as you can see is it has a little bit of a you know a little bit of a rareness it's, it's just like it's not polished it's not it's not like like smooth surface and like whatever so but i kind of like that it looks very you know like like it like it was meant to be something good but it stopped halfway kind of thing <laughs> i don't know i kind of dig that that little you know like homemade kind of feel of it um I'm very happy with them, all, all, all of them. I did a lot of tests. Um, if you guys seen the pictures on Facebook or whatever, you seen that I, I wasted a lot of plastic making just the enclosure. Uh, the PCBs, I also, um, I probably have them over here. Uh, I order probably three or four versions of them before I got to the, to the final one. So I did a lot of, tries and mistakes and retries and they will come and i'll put put you know solder everything there and put new pieces and try it out and if there was something i, I feel wrong about it and i will just scrap that and, and do another redesign and another redesign so um the ones that are here i mean even this guy i'm super happy with this um I obviously have uh, charging batteries and charging modules and stuff like that to make another version to to put a charging battery in whatever but I, I'm actually digging this I think this is so much so much better it's so much lighter and it wastes less less power so I'm, I'm gonna be working with this with you guys as well uh, I don't think I'm gonna be working on a, on a battery charging part one or whatever if you want to uh, turn off the video right now, you you can do it right now because from now on I'm going to be talking about Android. So Android, um, 
Android development. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me to make an app for Android, and I'm I'm aware that uh, probably half or forty percent or forty five percent of users of the RC have Androids, um, Android phones, for different reasons. Uh, something that you like, or you think uh, Apple is too expensive, or you know you think they're overpriced, or whatever. Um, maybe, you know, if you had money, you would not get an RC, you would get an, <laughs> a Hasselblad or something more expensive. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I'm aware that a lot of people use Android. The problem with Android, uh, and I, I ask a lot of people, like, would you be willing to buy the device? Because I, I don't have a phone, an Android phone here. So I asked a lot of people, I asked you guys on the, on the forum on, on Facebook, if you will be willing to buy a device, a pre-order a device before I make the app, so I can get that money to buy the the used phones, so I can get them here and do tests until I get it working and and be able to make them for you guys. Um, two people say yes. You know, out of all the people that said that that they wanted an Android um, an Android app. Just two people said that they would do the pre-order. Um, I don't know what happened to everyone else. I got a lot of likes, but <laughs> I don't know what the likes mean. Um, so yeah, that uh, that thing is not gonna happen. And uh, yeah, the more the more that I I try to research before that thing happens, you know, before anyone committed, um, I realize I I found out like blogs and whatever where people says you know. Uh, even that you make the connection when people upgraded to the Android 8.0 Oreo or whatever the name of that version is, uh, the connection stopped working with their with their Bluetooth. So when they upgraded the the OS, the the connection stopped working and and they were losing the connection. So it will connect for a couple of seconds and then when it goes to background, it will disconnect. It was a lot of messes with the upgrade, and this is if you already made the connection. Um, there are so many companies that make phones for Androids. So we have um, what Huawei, and then you have Sony, and then you have Google, and then you have uh, Amazon is making phones. At least here in Japan, they have uh, phones, and then there is uh, all the little companies over here and around the world. Um, so yeah, it's a mess. Uh, and each of the companies have several types of phones that they've been releasing from several years before. And uh, of course, not all of them will be compatible with this specific Bluetooth module. And some of the companies will be, but it, just some of the models and some of the companies will not be and whatever. So what I would need to do here is to have my whole wall full of phones, of Android phones, all kinds of things. And then do per, do one by one a test, which each one of them change the code if I could, right? To for each one of them in the code to say if you are a Nexus Seven Plus S P R series, then execute this type of connection. If you are a Nokia, blah, 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 and then do this thing. So I will have to do specifically make sure that every single one of the phones that I will have here would be available to connect to the device. And even if I manage to do that, uh, there is no guarantee that next year on the update, you will not, you will lose the connection to your, to your module. Or if you want to upgrade to another phone, now you can't because it's not compatible, it's not being tested. And of course, I'm not going to be able to get a wall of phones um, because of money-wise. I'm not a huge company, right? So I cannot afford to do like a huge test like that with real devices. Um, so if I can get three or four, maybe, I can tell you this device works with this phone, this model, and this OS. Do not upgrade because it's not gonna be compatible anymore, kind of thing. So if you happen to have that, then you can get it. If you don't have it, it may work and may not work. I don't know because I have never tested it. So yeah, I will have to make a list of the phones that are actually compatible with the device within the version of the OS. So as you can see, it's, it, 
it doesn't seem reasonable for me to do that or for anyone to 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 even buy it because if you were uh, if you were fix it with android and you don't want to leave android forever and uh, then uh, yeah you will need to wait until a bigger company that has a lot of you know fundings to do all those tests make sure that it's compatible for your phone um, and even that you may still have problems with the upgrades and the updates and whatever so just change to iPhone man. just change to Apple I know a lot of people says Apple is overpriced but look I'm, I, I can get you this one over here I mean not me but this is an iPhone 6 right iPhone 6 let me get the password on and I got the app here turn it on immediately connects I press this thing as you can see it's blinking down here it switches it counts it's fast you see I got no problems just to use it as a trigger maybe to chat or for Wi-Fi or just to leave it on the office or to leave it on your camera bag just a little thing that will help you maybe you can put an app here for like exposure checking uh, you can get a little stand like this or whatever well, not exactly like this but you can get a stand for if you want to take videos with it uh, you know if you're behind the scenes or whatever you can check you know exposures like I said or use it as a trigger um, I mean you you could get this and you know how much these things are twenty dollars this one I hear if I try to sell it I, I guess I just get like twenty dollars and the, because this is the six not the six s or the seven or the eight or whatever this is six you can probably get an iPhone 5 I have not not had one like a 5 e se or whatever but I think they came out with Bluetooth connectivity since 4 so yeah you can get a really old iPhone and as long as it's not you know locked or whatever you, you can use it or you can use an iPod and and these things are like super cheap so I think that it's the way to go for the people who has Androids. I'm not asking you to switch your whole computers and phones and everything just change to Apple, but I'm thinking for reliability, you should definitely just get something that is like really stable and that will have a lot of support from now on. And Apple doesn't support this phone anymore. The updates of the OS don't come out for this anymore. This will not be able to go into iOS 13, I think, because it's too old. But it doesn't matter because my app is, is compatible with it. You can still download it. And as you can see, it's still working perfectly. I have no problems. You can send it to background mode. The battery is fine. There is no problem to get like 20 bucks and just get a, a device that will be just specifically for your, you know, put it in your camera bag and don't need to worry. So that way you can, you know, be using your phone for something else and have your other device using for triggers or whatever well that's my suggestions if if you want to go that route I mean you can find these phones anywhere you want an eBay or Craigslist or whatever so that would be my suggestion is I think that's a better route than for me to do to manage to develop an app for an Android that is maybe not the same as you have and uh, when the update comes for the OS and you want to update the OS maybe it's not going to be compatible anymore so there's a lot of problems as you can see this thing it's compatible with pretty much every single iPhone that came out after what 2010 or I don't know but um, <laughs> maybe that was too much to say but uh, but yeah it's really compatible with iPhone and that's what I suggest to use if you got an iPad iPad mini iPad Pro they do work with this as well so that will be my suggestions for the Android people. So that will be an update, and uh, it's already what, three thirty-six a.m. I'm heading to bed. <laughs> I'm very happy that everyone else is uh, getting their uh, their div triggers very soon, and uh, thank you guys for watching. And see you guys. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, one thousand nine hundred, one thousand nine hundred eighty-two. That's the year I born. <laughs> I don't care to say that I'm about to be 37 years old. Yay. So, yeah, thanks guys for watching and see you guys.